portal. The top of the list of, in the hierarchy of causes behind excess cardiac related deaths has to be the experimental COVID mRNA vaccine until proven otherwise. And this is not speculative. No, I won't give away this, but let me just finish this trial and I'll give way to the Honourable Gentleman. This is not speculative, but based on the highest level of data which combines plausible biological mechanism, randomised controlled trials, high quality observational data, pharmacovigilance data, autopsy data, and clinical data. And those who choose not to acknowledge these cold, hard facts, cold, hard facts, Mr. Sagari, are either unaware of the evidence, willfully blind, or lack a conscience. I'll give way to the Honourable Gentleman. I'm very grateful to the member for giving way, and I'm grateful for uh, shining a spotlight on this important debate about excess deaths. But I'm just keen to understand the difference between co correlation and causation, because there's a correlation between eating ice cream and sunburn, but we don't necessarily <laughs> assume the two are together. Yeah. It could be sunny weather. The same goes for <laughs> this case. Is it to do with the fact it's lockdown? Is it to do with late presentation, access to the NHS? <coughs> these are the key bits to try and understand the causation and correlation to understand why these numbers are so high. I agree with the honourable gentleman, and he is a medical doctor, so he does have some knowledge, clearly. Uh, but to correlation is not causation. But correlation is an alarm bell, Sir Gary. And alarm bells are going off all over the building, but no one wants to open the door and see if there's a, there's a, there's a fire. Um, so what I've uh, done is I've sent a text, um, sorry, a tweet to uh, Luke Evans to let him know that causation has been shown. So the Bradford Hill criteria um, is accepted by the WHO. Um, there are 10 criteria, and if you meet five, they accept causation. Um, we've got Jessica Rose um, very thoroughly examined the information and found out that um, the harm against the COVID-19 uh, vaccines match 10 out of the 10 criteria. Um, so I sent that to him, I haven't had a reply. Um, and um, we've also got um, a, a conversation on the right hand side from the House of Commons and you might have seen a video of this and this was Dr Luke Evans talking to Matt Hancock um, about the um, uh, good death. What is a good death? A good death um, must be that we've got the right equipment, uh, the right medication, and the um, staff to actually do the, uh, the necessary. Um, and they talked about the levels of midazolam, and that's perhaps something we can talk about more in extra. Um, but basically, there was a lot of midazolam for two years' supply that was used up. Yeah, in <clears> that killed Sudo. Um, so... Going on to the meeting, um, Andrew went on and quoted Professor Carl Hennigan and Azima Holtra and Dr. Claire Craig. Um, and uh, Dr. Craig has actually waited too many months for answers to her questions over the production of full statistics from the UK HSA and the ICO. Um, he was also involved uh, many years ago in exposing the post office scandal right from the start. And he used that as an example of how long it takes to unravel a problem through government where no one wants to admit culpability. He also referenced thalidomide and the 11 years it took to actually uh, make any changes. And those changes, of course, were the introduction of the Medicines Act 1968. And that eventually gave us rise to the MHRA. So there were 24 MPs and two health ministers. Nine MPs were given three minutes each. Uh, which wasn't long enough because the minutes, uh, ministers were given 10 minutes each. And these um, nine MPs uh, raised various aspects of this. They talked about the silence of the NHS. They talked about viral waves not being affected by lockdown and jabs, the safety of the vaccine postponed in the inquiry, serious concerns about falsifying and concealing data, the health service um, being concerned with only one disease for a long period of time. Um, and then um, that they should take people seriously and find out why these excess deaths are occurring. Also, they talk, it, it, so, so one of them talked about schools all having defibrillators now, and perhaps that raises more questions than it actually answers. There was a, a Sir George Howard um, who gave derisory uh, comments about the so-called experts from the last um, meeting that was held. Um, and one MP um, emphasised that excess deaths have only occurred since 2021 